I've been a car guy since I'm about 14 and a half. Drove illegally as a kid on Long Island. My first car was a 1956 Oldsmobile 88 convertible. And I immediately found a body shop that was willing to customize it, which turned out to be somewhat radical for the East in the 1950s. Out here in the West, uh, it was a different story. This is where we got all our ideas and information from. Yeah, I started Pro Design back in 1992. Uh, from there, it just evolved from there. Anything that's, that's custom, anything that's different, uh, I really enjoy. I don't like to do, a, you know, like a production type build. So being creative in our builds, uh, you know, I enjoy something that's, that's different, you know. Much like the car that we're building for Jeff, the, uh, this 56 Olds is a very unique and, and custom build. I have to create something that is appealing to, to not only myself and my customer, but also to everyone else. And that's difficult to do. You know, like the, the Oldsmobile that we're working on, this 56 Olds, um, I still wanted to create something, and so did Jeff, something of the 50s era. With a good custom, you'd add a pack of taillight if that's what you like. I like that look, but this goes way, beyond, way, way beyond. About eight or nine years ago, Mike and I decided we wanted to do another car, and I wanted to do a, a 56 Oldsmobile. We took a 98 Tudor hardtop, uh, cut the top off, lowered the windshield two and a quarter inches. 99% of the time, people don't see a particular spot on a car or a certain item. When you get in there and look in these little areas, you'll see that the detail has been addressed there. It's the devil's in the detail. You have to cover every nook and cranny. A lot of parts have been handmade. Uh, a lot of parts have been CNC machined. Most likely has somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 different pieces that were made for us with a continuity of design throughout. Uh, the wheels that we have are to replicate a 1956 Oldsmobile hubcap, but they're actually wheels. We have a shifter that was made. We have a center console that was made. We have a steering wheel that's one off. The car won't have a key. It'll just have a starter knob. We have two knobs, that and the lights. So the instrumentation looks like a Lincoln Zephyr, but the instrument panel itself, the billet panel, it's our, it's our own design. One of the things that Mike and I have always liked and we, we're on the same page about is we like subtle. The original hood emblem on a 56 Oldsmobile, we changed the design on that. It's now much more like an oval and the line that goes through it is much longer and it's, it's recessed into the hood. It was a pack of taillights back in the 56, 55 era, but they are one-off uh, 3D printed to our own design, our own specification, and we hand fabricated the bezels. Mike built a custom exhaust system, and they a exit in a notch underneath the license plate on the rear bumper. You look at the back of the car, that the, the, the Continental kit, we the spare tire, we Frenched it into the trunk. We Frenched it into the rear panel. Quarter panels have been uh, lengthened. They've been extended. The, uh, uh, the skirts have been incorporated into the quarter panels. The front end is one piece. The fenders are connected, and the, the hood now opens up right where it curves at the top. It started out with a Corvette-type grill, and there again, we had to fabricate to make it fit the original grill opening. We took a 98 two-door hardtop, uh, cut the top off, lowered the windshield two and a quarter inches, and created from scratch a Carson-type removable hardtop. Chassis has been, well, besides just plated and smooth, the arms have been recreated, the rear uh, trailing arms, it's all one-off design, but the way they've been created and designed, they look somewhat original, but they're not. All of the same fasteners, 
shaved of any markings, any, any codes about size or, or thread. A lot of guys were, you know, if they were racing, they wanted that best motor that was, that was out there. Uh, we've spent hours, a tremendous amount of hours, in deburring the motor, smoothing the motor. Anything that's cast, you can't see any of the casting marks. You can't see any of the creases, the ridges, the holes. And then building, everything went off. From the water pump to all the bracketry, uh, the valve covers, uh, the throttle bodies are of a 2G style throttle body, not a carburetor, but they, they still look like a carburetor. So if you look closely at them, we disguised all of the wiring, uh, a lot of the plumbing to still, at first glance, you'll think that they're carburetors. We have one-off designed air cleaners that again keep the same theme as all the other one-off parts. We started off with a seat that would look like a, uh, an Impala seat, 65 Impala, but again, we didn't want to take just a seat off of an Impala with the chrome and, and put that in there. So it, it's kind of been recreated to, to match and to flow. The door panels are all one off the armrests. The door handles, the armrests, those are all one-off design, machined in, in a billet aluminum. You know, back in the 50s, 60s, maybe the 70s, you're taking bits and pieces off of these other cars, uh, items off of different cars, rather it be, you know, the Lincoln Zephyr Dash, the uh, Thunderbird seat, the um, rear seat, the Impala front seats, you know, back in the day, that's what a lot of people did. And that's what made it creative and, and unique. You want to strive for as close to perfection as possible.